greetings. We'll give folks a few moments to be able to come on in. Tims, you made it. That was also a mic check. Like, here's your opportunity for a mic check. I'm sure that like I, Zoom is perfect. Just can fine. you hear me? No. Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> I'm holding for a few more folks, but um, yeah, we got 20 more in. Yeah, hang for like a hot minute, and then we'll get started. And Max, I see you're on the line. Um, I'm hoping that this is like, yeah, come on in. <laughs> no okay. problem. No, perfect. This is also an opportunity to be able to do a mic check for you as you're our first one on the agenda today, so. All right. Yeah, normally it, it should work. I mean, you also need to run the the, sick, uh, the release team meeting, so hopefully. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a one-time thing, it's, it's fine. No worries, no yeah. worries. All right, perfect. That, just wanted to make sure that like everything was working around in there as well, and it sounds like it is, so. Perfect, okay. I believe that's probably who we're gonna get today. So um, I'll go ahead and kick us off and uh, here's our normal antitrust policy notice. It's good to see all of you. Fun. And it's good to see all of you as well. Welcome to our new chair, Dims. And at this point, I will hand off to Dims. Hi, what am I supposed to do here? <laughs> you are doing just fine. Like, walk us through the agenda, walk us through like where we're going in here. Um, uh, yeah. You know, just, just be the meeting host. At the end. I'm, I'm here for backup. I'm here to be able to support you now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, uh, we wanted to talk, open the agenda today talking about the new um, proposal that uh, came our way um, both in uh, as a as a PR as well as um, a PR on an issue I forget but uh, also as an email and uh, there was some chat on slack too so Max would you like to open up uh, the discussion here sure absolutely would love to so um, thanks first of all to, for having me um, so I had a discussion with a couple of friends and colleagues um, all around the, the cloud native environment um, about actually quite interesting field. Um, this is a working title, Tech Sustainability. Um, we got already a lot of very positive feedback on it, um, but also about the title. So maybe you can call it better Tech Environmental Sustainability, for example. Nevertheless, um, what it is about. Um, as you may know, there are some small minor climate changes around the globe heating up a little bit here and there. And we have a lot of little pieces which basically have an effect on this. Um, this is like when we travel with airplanes or drive too much cars, um, but also the IT industry has uh, a very good impact on it. Um, overall, the ICT industry itself is comparable with a couple of countries together. Um, depending on the numbers, and we need to say here they are not very 100% clear because it's always just estimations. Um, but the global ICT is comparable from the energy consumption as well as the CO2 emissions um, 
like with Italy, for example, um, which is, is a good, good amount of size. Um, on the same time, research has shown that it's to be expected, expected that in the next five years, this will double. And in the next 10 years, um, maybe even raised by more 10% um, due to all the development and happenings. And there's a lot of activities around this topic. Um, you have the um, Green Software Foundation, um, which is specifically taking a look about how to maybe optimize software, what are good patterns to optimize the software. You have tons of other um, yeah, sustainability activities, but somehow there's always missing a little bit this gap to bring it really actively to the community. For sure not, because in the first step, when you start a open source project or you're working deep in an open source project, um, it's maybe the last thing you think about that you could have an impact on the environment. But this is exactly the point where we thought like, wait a minute, we have an awesome great community with hundreds of tools which are used globally worldwide. So if one of these tools just change a little bit something in it and get a little bit more efficient, it has directly a very big impact on the, on the whole um, community. And I mean, very big is maybe a little bit over, over traumatized, but we, talking here maybe about um, a good amount of tons of CO2, which are reduced just from light. I don't know, let's say make Kubernetes a little bit more efficient in how it deals with resources. And this is all about this tech sustainability. It should build a bridge from all these different teams which are out there and communities out there and try to bring their best practice, their ideas to our cloud native community to help the teams to shape an idea about it, um, to help to identify uh, a good approach also for each of the projects um, to find their own way um, to optimize either it's a software or how they are deployed. Um, and also in the overall contribution to the project it can be also a good approach to, to support here. Now, again, let's think about Kubernetes. Um, we have every night, every day running hundreds of tests continuously. Um, if you can optimize here something, this will also have a positive impact. And also what we also not should forget is for sure also the end user community, right? We have a good um, approach or we can have a good chance over the community to also reach out to the end users. And some of our end users already got, for example, also targets to reduce their emissions. So it goes hand in hand. And I think all these changes need some way um, in a place where we can bring it together, where we can bundle it um, because also I said the whole, um, yeah, how to say community, the sustainable community is in a constant move, in a constant research, in a constant change of minds and making up things. Um, and this is where the tech would come in, um, try to bundle all of these incomes, sort a little bit out what is relevant for us in the first move, what is maybe relevant in the second move and um, shape out of it potential actions, which we then can give into um, all of our open source um, projects um, and set up maybe a, a kind of, I do not want to call it maybe standard, but a set of good practices, which can be adopted um, also from other projects out there, um, from end users, for example, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So we don't want to reinvent the wheel, but we are more like a funnel, um, bringing the good things to the, to the communities, help the communities um, to utilize it and um, make the best out of it. Uh, thanks, Max. Um, so uh, it, it, this is a really good, uh, you know, effort that you know we should be definitely thinking about for sure. Um, so one, when I saw this one, uh, I was look, I went looking for like, what has anybody else done before, for example, right, uh, in the space? Like the one thing that came to mind quickly was like, um, people started. Uh, measuring uh, how much uh, it, uh, how much energy, energy electricity is used in creating and maintaining the blockchains for example right um, so the, you know and saying that hey um, gpu based mining uh, and things like that are essentially taking up valuable resources and then causing harm too so uh, th that was the closest that i could get to um, do you are you aware of any other examples where people have measured something and uh, you know, um, well, I mean, 
we're talking always about cloud native and somehow directly stuck with our head in the clouds. But uh, reality is that most of the workload is still running on premise, right? Mm -hmm. And um, to measure on premise the emissions electricity consumption, for example, is actually quite a simple thing because if you build a data center, you should have redundant energy supply and you have energy contracts per the supply. Mm -hmm. um, so um, to bring here in some measurements could be an easy point of view. Uh, another very active community, which measure, measures actually the resource consumptions um, overall, would be the FinOps community, right? Mm -hmm. um, however, and I mean, FinOps or the optimization for costs and therefore also the optimization of resource consumption is very close together, but it has two totally different, uh, it comes from two totally different um, areas, right? Um, however, we can utilize also a lot of uh, approaches and thoughts and models behind the FinOps and easily spoken just to replace uh, the coins, the dollar coins, um, with metric tons of uh, CO2, for example. Right? Um, and you see also this move in the major cloud providers like uh, AWS and Google Cloud um, currently um, publishing and, and open up the APIs for gathering all this emission uh, data um, out of your workload. Um, Azure has it since years as a kind of BI dashboard available, right? Um, so there's already a good foundation also towards this direction where we can um, start working with. Um, there are also some great open source tools on the market, which uh, have done already all this uh, ground and foundation research, which can be utilized. So mm -hmm. the foundation is all given, um, but as I said, there's a lot of activities going around and this is what we can bring very well together. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Richie, do you want to uh, voice your uh, thought, please? Uh, sure, uh, I was just saying that uh, on the measurement side, I agree that it's relatively easy to, to take proper measurements on data center efficiency and such. And this is like in particular cooling, the largest thing which you can do about data centers efficiency. Um, but it's often highly complex to get this out of the actual providers unless you force them through an open book energy contract or something. Um, maybe also speaking with a project head on within Prometheus team, we have debated this quite extensively, how we can reduce our CI CD uh, impact and everything because we are building all the time for all the platforms, blah, 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 blah. Um, and we have to to provide good software for our users, but having specific actions, maybe even things which we can just apply to our CI CD, which, which chooses good trade-offs, Prometheus team would love to do this and, and just like implement it and, and do our part in, in reducing this once there is results from this tech, which in summary, I really like this initiative. Um, Josh had a question on, you know, practical terms. What do we do next kind of thing, Josh? Oh, no, I was just saying from the, um, from the introduction, it sounded like there might be already a couple of pro projects or prospective projects for this tag. Yeah, so uh, I, again, the question is like, for us, what does it mean? Does Is, is it a tag or is it a working group? Uh, and is it gonna own like or control or you know uh, cover certain uh, specific projects and what would they be? Um, because you know, for us tag has a specific connotation here, right? As an organization, uh, organizing principle. Well, I believe, um from the perspective of like, is it, is it a tag or is it a working group? Um, I think a working group always has a very specific target, something which is uh, discussing about goals, smart. You can measure it, you can, can see it, you can touch it. Um, I think with a tag, this is more like a strategic long-term thing which needs to get on its way, which can ch change its shape. Uh, maybe we understand on, on half the way, okay, all the things we have thought about, is not the thing. Maybe it's a totally different different direction which we need to change. And um, also here, I said from also from the explanation I give, I think we have already a good amount of different work groups which we can think about under it. Like um, also like um, Richie says, like okay, we have a big CI/CD part in it, and um, just to optimize this whole CI/CD and define maybe a, a new standard or a new best practice how to optimize CI/CDs. 
um, is, is a whole big work group of itself. Uh, and this means also that maybe this work group has to reach out for the CD foundation and talk with all our friends and colleagues who are building CI CD tools and, and GitOps tools and so on and so forth. Um, maybe even to collaborate like with the tech application delivery to us because they are already in the field and experts of this. And maybe we can just bring in a new taste to this direction, right? Mm -hmm. um, but from this explanation, as you see, um, and this is just one field where we, where we can think of, it's getting already quite quite big and complex. That's why I believe to define overall the environment sustainability um, as a work group would be most likely very, very large. Um, so let me call on uh, other uh, TOC members if they have any question. Uh, Justin, Emily. So I'm curious what you would find as like the initial scope of the tag versus working group I think of as key deliverables. What are you thinking about from You've already identified a few potential working groups if this were to become a tag. How are you planning on scoping that? Um, and I, I've read through the proposal and it, it's fairly comprehensive, but I I'm, I'm, want to ensure like the tags that we have have charters and that's kind of like guiding principles around them. And I'm curious where you see this fitting in as well as what those capabilities are. Are you looking to provide like not necessarily a cloud native eight for security faults, but something along the night lines of cloud native environmental responsibilities and those design principles that you're expecting projects and organizations because i can see it coming from both perspectives to take on mm -hmm. yeah yeah you also highlighted a couple of very interesting um, parts in it um so i think one of the the first major step is really to um shape a relevant group of people around this. Um, I got a lot of positive feedbacks per, per email also on the on the proposal I've sent around um, of at least a handful of people who said like, hey, this is exactly what we are looking for or we are working on this already in this direction, um, how we can, can support you. So I think a good foundation to this direction is already given. Um, we have also written in our proposal some first good ideas in which direction we can go. Uh, speaking of CICD is the one thing um, raising the awareness of this topic is, a, is another very good direction. We have our um, surveys uh, by, by CNCF yearly going out. Um, why not extend it by two, three, four questions and giving a first good touch in this direction? Because the data in this direction of environmental sustainability is very poor on the one hand side, and it's very complex to gather it. Um, so this could be also a very good kickstart into this direction. And, um, define and, and you know, make it transparent what is actually going on, that there's a lot of companies moving into this direction and um, having thoughts around it, but maybe getting lost in it. The same like what we have seen, why we come to the idea to propose it, to streamline this effectively. Yeah. Okay, one more chance to the TOC members and then I'll call on other people. Uh, Justin, do you have a question? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um working out what is going to be what is going to deliver is really important i think that we we've got this idea that cncf is a project focused foundation but we actually do a lot of non project work and i think you know tag security is a good example of it does a lot of work you know educating and helping users understand security landscapes and i think um this kind of falls into perhaps largely into that kind of work or i mean i think there would be some potentially some useful projects as well but i think it would be good to um you know write a kind of a sort of plan of what a road you know what a roadmap of deliverables might look like so we can kind of make it a bit more concrete i think that but i think a lot of people are very unsure what to do and it kind of it, in that way it's a, it was a little bit like the security space where People know there's problems, but they don't know how to solve them and they don't know how other people are solving them and they don't have a place to go and communicate these difficulties. And so that sounds that sounds really helpful, I think, from my point of view. Sounds good. Uh, Bob. Did you want to summarize something? Oh, yeah. So just uh, from my thoughts in, in chat was from the outputs of this, it looks um, more like white papers and best practices, um, which has historically aligned more with working groups 
Um, and there, there are working groups out there that have spawned projects that then enter sandbox. Um, I do think like it, as far as defining a roadmap, possibly looking at other projects, you know, might push it more like at least my personal opinion, uh, towards a tag, but like, um, right now with everything, I would, I would definitely lean towards like working group. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Luis, did you want to say some? Yeah, I think it's pretty much in line with what Emily said. I also think it's an important and valuable initiative, something that's very new to a lot of artists. That I think that's why scoping and initial deliverables will be crucially important because like really a, a wide field and giving people something that is easily usable and applicable by them early on will be crucial there. So it's more or less about, about, about scoping and um, being like very specific about deliverables early on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, and uh, the point Emily is making also is like we can start as a working group and then we can move it to an, into tag if it like outlives some stuff or uh, it adopts uh, some uh, projects under its uh, uh, wings, so to say. So, uh, I, yeah, but you know, definitely love the idea and we should do something and we should do something quick uh, because, you know, as a uh, as a humanity, we are running out of time at this point, right? Um, so any other last, Ricardo, did you want to say something? Yeah, I think um, having a working group sounds like a good idea. It's just having um, some sort of deliverable, maybe creating a landscape around sustainability, around uh, projects and things that uh, are related to the other tax. I do think it's kind of like the, the scope is really wide. There's so many, so many things around sustainability um, and maybe having some sort of deliverable will help us or will help the, the community understand more of the scope, right? And, and kind of like narrow it, narrow it down to, to something a little bit more, more that yeah. aligns mm -hmm. with, with, with all the other, other tags. I do, I do think deliverables concrete also will help some of us to pitch in, right? Uh, otherwise, we don't know what we'll do there, right? Yeah, yeah. And I do think the only other tag that is kind of like around processes is tag uh, contributor strategy, but like all the other tags are around projects, right? So mm -hmm. if if something kind of aligns more on the projects, it's what, what the community has done in, in the CNCF, so. Yeah. Um... Per uh, discussion on the mailing list, I, uh, as co-chair of, of contributor strategy, I don't think this is really appropriate for contributor strategy um, because it's not really about the people specifically. It's more honestly about the code um, and what it's doing. And so it doesn't, doesn't seem appropriate to put it under us. Yeah, got it, Josh. Thank yep. you. Yep. So uh, Emily, you have the last word and then we'll, um, you know, we can take it back to uh, mailing list and uh, the issues. Yep, I think it needs to get back to the mailing list. I think a rename is going to be important so that we don't have any collisions with the other technical terms. Um, I suggested conservation working group for the time being. I think this might be beneficial for um, potentially runtime or one of the other more operational tags that's focused on things that are already out in production, already working, something to that effect. But I can also see potentially um, some partnership with security tag as well to ensure the conservation recommendations are not in violation of any security or policy oriented controls. Uh, so it looks like the first thing to do is like pick a name, <laughs> uh, have a survey to pick a name, <laughs> Don. Oh. Okay. Naming is always a problem. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Max, so we uh, uh, the plan looks okay to you. Uh, go back to the mailing list, and then we can pick a name, and we can uh, debate a little bit on uh, the Absolutely. working outputs, and uh, go from there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. To, uh, can we go to the next slide, please, Amy? Okay. Tag app delivery. Who do we have here today? Yeah, uh, hello, uh, very brief update from Tech App Delivery this time. Um, on project reviews, we have uh, still Captain, which is still in review. And yeah, Amy and I were of the hiccups we had in the review process here, but this seems to be moving forward right now. Otherwise, no projects are in review, but what we still see very positively that also sandbox projects, also done uh, like 
forced to uh, reach out to, um, to the tags are still actively reaching out to present to the tag and tag members, which um, I think is very good. Uh, update on the cooperative delivery working group. Um, there, beyond our regular work, we started to look into a most likely it's going to be a white paper on multi-tenant app delivery. So this came up in a lot of conversations we had. So how do you best ship multi-tenant applications on Kubernetes? There is a lot of knowledge out there. There are different people doing it in different ways. Also discussions obviously around hard multi-tenancy, soft multi-tenancy, more and more options that we have, like starting from namespaces, separate clusters entirely, running clusters inside of clusters and so forth, um, requirements people are having. Uh, but this was a topic we saw more and more coming up here and um, the goal is to draft this towards a uh, white paper, most likely recommendation or just listing the options that are available there. I think eventually it will turn out these are the options that you have to solve certain problems so that then, okay, this is a good practice to solve it or like this is the way you should be doing it. Uh, Chaos Engineering Working Group. Um, yeah, there's the co chair voting going on there. A um, bit more updates on content on the white paper uh, in the next update from our side. The last one I pretty much took over from the last one. So the blog post is still in the working and uh, we need to see how we can get it posted, what app delivery is actually doing, because that was the feedback we already got from the, from the last KubeCon. It's like, oh, you really exist. Yes, uh, we do. And there's actually material out there. And sometimes people, but we also see people now starting to reference material, especially like the operator white paper and so forth. Um, yeah, app delivery. Uh, we wanted to do it in app delivery day at KubeCon in Valencia. We started rather late and probably were a bit too optimistic to get this done in time. Nevertheless, we're now heading for doing it for Detroit for North America. And yeah, I just updated the slide briefly before there's one item missing for some very strange reasons how the internet and most likely Outlook works. Um, none of us got the update on submitting our session for uh, the maintainers track. So this time there won't be a session on uh, for KubeCon Valencia, which is totally our fault. Um, but still, I was wondering why I'm not getting any emails anymore from Amy and from the CNCF uh, and others as well. And we figured it out right now. So let me take this one offline. Yes. Cool. I'll go sort it out. Yeah. Um, so uh, thanks, Alois. Uh, the, the first one is uh, Captain, sorry, uh, you know, we kind of like dropped the ball as a TOC and we need to get it back on track for sure. Um, so uh, let's see what we can do here. Um, we already have one other uh, TOC member, uh, Harry, picking up uh, some of the work. Uh, so hopefully it will be better this time. Um, so the other one I had the input was uh, the multi-tenant. Uh, there is a work group for multi-tenancy in Kubernetes. Uh, so, the working group is on cooperative delivery as a whole, which like covers infrastructure and app collaboration and constantly shipping it. But one of the big topics that obviously came up is shipping multi-tenant uh, applications or SaaS style applications that uh, the team is looking into collecting best practices and so forth, yeah. Yeah, at this point, I think they are working on like how to make Kubernetes multi-tenants rather than the apps. Um, so, but maybe, you know, just getting, a, 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 I mean, starting to talk to them might be helpful in some shape or form because they might be other people interested in the app delivery side of things there. Okay. Yeah, so once we have something to share, I'll reach out to them to have like a, obviously we always encourage input from a wider audience. I think that's also what the TOC meetings are good for. Sounds good. Uh, any other questions from TOC members or community for the tag app delivery? Going once, going twice. Uh, let's go to the next one, Amy. Um, so, uh, Josh. Hey there. Yeah, okay. Yep. Uh, Okay, uh, just a quick rundown um, of uh, diverse activities. Um, uh, one is we're continuing our awareness campaign of the tag in order to make uh, primarily CNC projects aware of the resources that are available to them. Um, the, um, uh, including some activity around KubeCon uh, EU. Um, uh, the, um, uh, we've uh, had approved and merged um, uh, a README template, um, so we're getting much closer to 
sort of having a complete set of templates for project paperwork. Um, uh, documentate, full documentation for those templates is trailing that a bit, but we're working on it. Um, the, um, uh, we're waiting for our TOC, our new TOC liaisons. Um, I, you know, hello, Matt and Emily, I, to have a chance to look at the re new reviewing template, which is an example of uh, how to uh, uh, construct a document that says how things will be reviewed, um, which is something a lot of projects need. Um, the, um, uh, and um, uh, Paris, one of our ex-chairs is working on a proposal um, about a potential requirement uh, for community management for graduated projects. Um, the, um, and you'll probably see that next month. The, um, uh, as well as look for soon announcements about the next couple of maintainer circle um, uh, items um, the, um, uh, with a professional coach um, that we're going to set up for, again, for the maintainers. And please let uh, maintainers that you work with on projects know about it when you see that because um, this is to help maintainers. Um, uh, I know I promised that we were going to have a proposal by this meeting for a mentorship uh, working group under TAG-CS. Um, as many of you may know, uh, the CNCF staff head of mentorship is um, currently busy with other things. Um, uh, so that's a little bit delayed. Um, and uh, we met with a bunch of folks at the uh, March 10th TAG meeting who are working on a proposal for um, a diversity and inclusiveness uh, working group uh, that will be under TAG CS um, for efforts in that direction. So look for that on the TOC mailing list um, pretty soon. Um, and as always, a reminder, um, when you're doing due diligence or providing uh, feedback or sponsorship to projects and you see that they need help in specific areas, um, uh, please feel free to refer them to us. Um, they can show up at meetings. Oh. Uh, I just realized I didn't put this on the slide. Here's an important thing. Um, I, in for simplicity and to make it easier for projects to find us if they want to find us through a meeting, we've simplified our meeting schedule. Um, our meetings are now uh, entirely uh, Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, um, uh, alternating between the various working groups um, each week. Um, but if a project needs any sort of contributor strategy type help, um, they can uh, dial in um, Thursdays, 10 a.m. Pacific. And of course, on Slack and on the mailing list and everything else. Uh, same Zoom link, right, Josh? <laughs> yes, yes, same Zoom link for all of those. Um, you know, it alternates between governance, contributor growth, general tag, probably will be uh, diversity inclusiveness um, in the loop uh, as well in the future. Uh, sounds good, thank you. Uh, any questions for Josh uh, from anyone? Hey Josh, how, how many uh, working groups does the tag actually have? Uh, right now it has two. Um, and so the proposal is two more. Um, the, um, uh, so, and these are just specific efforts that again, you know, sort of our mission as a tag is the people behind the projects. Um, so when somebody comes with a proposal around, uh, again, around the people behind the projects, so like, uh, the CNCF staff wanted someplace for mentorship efforts that are CNCF wide to live. Um, and, um, and then we had another group who was very interested in starting more organized DEI activity um, under mm -hmm. the CNCF um, umbrella. Tag CS seemed like the appropriate place for it. Um, and we form working groups for these for the same reason anybody else does, right? Because there is somebody who wants to do it and we want to give them the chance to do it. Um, their way um, without necessarily needing to make it a uh, committee meeting. Yep. Sounds good. good, Josh. Thank you. Um, uh, it, one last time. Anybody else? Any other questions? Once, twice, twice. Uh, Amy, next slide, please. Tag Network. Hey, Lee. All right. Hey. Well, uh, of 
tag networks uh, last couple of discussions. I'll draw your attention to the lower right-hand corner in terms of projects. Uh, Fab Edge is probably, I think, the most recently um, adopted sandbox level project um, from tag network. There have been um, activity from the maintainers of Araki Mesh and Database Mesh uh, in terms of their consideration toward uh, proposing for Sandbox. I think Araki Mesh did, they just haven't presented in the tag just yet. That's not a requirement, but, but they had asked to. And so uh, just random, just a question for me, do you all recall if that if Iraqi mesh has been reviewed yet, or if it, if it's nope. proposed? Okay, they might have just written up the proposal, but not actually submitted. And okay, and so very good. Um, so that's a large, or or that's a, kind of the focus of tag network. I'll mention. I'll kind of go in reverse order and draw your eyes to the upper right hand corner. Um, there's different. You know, Google Summer of Code is coming up. Um, there's a list of uh, a number of projects that are participating. Um, those from Tag Network, there, there are the three listed here, um, chaos, chaos Mesh, and so on. Uh, Tag Network has a couple of working groups. The most active one is the Service Mesh Performance, I'm sorry, the Service Mesh, uh, Service Mesh Working Group. Um, Service Mesh Performance is one of the projects represented within there. Um, looking toward KubeCon and Service Mesh Con, there's two activities coming out of Service Mesh Working Group that um, well, I guess I'll say should finally be published. Uh, there's there are contributors working on an early version of uh, of a performance dashboard that looks at um, different test scenarios, different um, performance test results. We've kind of talked about this a lot on this um, in the, on these calls. The tests are now being run inside of the CNCF labs. There's automation that's been completed since last we gave an update. Uh, that, that runs those tests. There's a solicitation uh, for anyone interested in a review of the different test scenarios or suggestions to change those or opinions and ardent opinions are most welcome. They're, they're one of the participating groups and a couple of the maintainers of uh, from from Intel on service mesh performance um, have been helping steward uh, MeshMark as a as a performance index as a as a measure of well of, of cloud native performance. I mean, it's currently kind of network centric in its um, you know measurements, but um, and so there's a, a presentation forthcoming. It sounds good. Just curious, uh, is Istio covered uh, in any of this, uh, you know, dashboards or testing? Okay. It is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And uh, the service, service MeshCon is day zero. Um, are you getting good participation numbers uh, so far? We, uh, uh, yeah. Um, the, I don't, I, boy, I, this is going to feel awkward and I hope that everyone takes this in the best way, but like, <laughs> It is it is super surprising to me just the level of interest that folks have in the service mesh performance, as uh, as I tend to think that mathematical numbers are somewhat boring, but I don't, but everyone else doesn't, and so the open the project office hours for service mesh performance are uh, like much to my surprise you know, very well attended. Um, the, the service mesh con itself, I'm I'm not on the um, program committee. Um, but th there's a lot of, there's, there's, there's a lot of submissions. There's a lot of, uh, there's been a, something of a question about equal representation. I think at that particular, um, uh, equal representation of, of sort of speakers and the vendors that they align to, but, but a super active, um, conference or Sounds day. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any questions from anyone? for TAC Network. Going once, going twice. Thank you, Matt. Amy, yeah, TAC Observability. Hi, everybody. Matt or Richie, one of you. Yep. Hello. Uh, hi. hi. 
Um, so uh, I'll just give a quick update here of some current activities and what we've had going on. Um, last month at our last meeting, uh, we had the Hubble project come, uh, the Cilium, Cilium's Hubble project, uh, come and give an overview uh, to the tag, uh, just about what it is, what the scope of it is, et cetera. Uh, Pixie, the Pixie project, uh, also came and gave an update on some of the things that they've done uh, in that project since the last time they visited uh, nearly a year ago. Um, so those were both well received. Uh, and uh, Henrik Rext, uh, who runs a podcast called It's Observable, um, uh, has been working with Michael Hasenblas and, and some others to launch a new open source news. Uh, it's a short format um, video series I'll, I'll, we're going to talk about it today as well. Uh, today, uh, in the meeting, which immediately follows the TOC meeting uh, twice a month, uh, we're having Lee from Meshery uh, present to the community. Um, service meshes, as, as everyone knows, <laughs> um, well, as, as people will increasingly know, are a huge source of signals for observability to understand uh, what's going on with, with our systems and how they behave and how they operate. Um, uh, so he's going to give an overview of the project, and we're going to talk about uh, sort of some of the observability aspects of it and how it can contribute to the canon. Um, uh, uh, there's a spelling mistake there. I'm sorry, Henrik. <laughs> uh, Henrik is going to give a short update too. We've not, he's now launched uh, and, and published the first uh, of this sort of short format, uh, what's going on in open source. Uh, I think it's going to be bi-weekly initially, but it might move to weekly. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, that. Uh, we'll have an update on a working group that we launched. Um, uh, just uh, about a month ago. Uh, we've been talking about it for a few months called Observe-K8s. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, uh, we're, we took a page from uh, Tag App Deploy's um, playbook uh, with the GitOps working group, which subsequently launched Open GitOps. Uh, here, we want to do something similar. We formed a working group uh, to launch something that has its own life uh, beyond the working group called Observe-K8s. And the basic idea is to be alliterative. alliterative uh, well, it's in the slide, but it's a, it's a collection of uh, case studies that are clonable on uh, how to use uh, observability tooling that's within the CNCF umbrella combined with representative workloads. Um, we have uh, been doing some, uh, some socialization uh, of the idea and reaching out to various actors in the, in the community uh, and we're, we're approaching critical mass here where we have a, a number of people that want to contribute both uh, good working examples of microservices and other cloud native deployments uh, combined with ways to observe them. Uh, and there's, there's different ways to observe different workloads for the same workloads. And this is meant to be a starting point that's accessible, uh, that's community driven, uh, that people can use uh, to get started or to learn you know, something specific. Uh, so, so that's gaining steam, uh, uh, and we've, we're now on the CNCF calendar. Uh, we've just sent out uh, doodles and things like that, so we're having regular meetings starting up, uh, and so we're excited by that. I wanted to just briefly say there's a brand new book that came out by Richard Seitz. Um, he's been a luminary in our field. His PhD advisor was um, Donald Knuth. Um, uh, that book just came out, uh, and basically it covers a technique that we used to use almost 20 years ago uh, with Windows CE, uh, where unlike a regular sampling profile, which goes tick, 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 you know, and records where you were, on every thread context switch, or when a thread wakes up, uh, it, it knows why it woke up, the scheduler knows why it, wake up, why it woke up, and so that data set is, is captured. So um, you, you end up with a profile that shows the relationships between when threads woke up and what they were waiting on, you know, why did they wake up? So this provides a more nuanced uh, view of the interactions of systems. And as you know, increasingly uh, we see cloud native systems expanding to mobile devices, edge networks, or edge, you know, edge scenarios with heterogeneous networking, uh, the rise of all sorts of different hardware, uh, combined with um, real movements on the storage space as well. You know, in many cases, storage is no longer the bottleneck it once was. So many systems that were built atop uh, storage with the assumption that storage is slow, uh, such as LSM trees <laughs> and that, that are used to implement key value stores. You know, all of these are being turned upside down. So there's a real need to understand in more than just simple terms uh, how these systems are behaving, how we can measure them, uh, and how they are misbehaving. Uh, so uh, 
we'll, we'll have more on this in, in coming meetings, I think, I hope. Um, but I reached out to Dr. Seitz uh, and we have started a dialogue there. Uh, I recommend the book. Uh, I'm about three quarters of the way through it and we'll be talking about that today as well. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we're gonna talk about our logo today, um, uh, our mascot slash logo. Um, next slide. Uh, I wanted to highlight something that doesn't fit neatly in all the categories necessarily, but some time ago, you know, when we launched uh, the tag and, and started making our initial um, definitions of work, you know, we wanted to do something very simple, you know, make a, make a big list of vendors and, and projects and who contributes to them. Uh, and this, um, this was last summer and last fall in the TLC meeting, um, in one of the TLC meetings in the tail end of September, I think, we had a fairly lengthy discussion on an end user community survey uh, where, you know, I, I won't rehash it all, but basically there was some ambiguity about, you know, what's a project, what's a vendor, what kind of sectors and domains are they in? Um, and there was, we had identified a need to have a more nuanced data model and a more nuanced way to look at the landscape. Uh, so this kind of motivated us to reach out uh, as a tag and say, well, who else is working in the space? And, and the next and last slide, please. So we, we found that the Business Value Subcommittee or the BVS um, had been undergoing uh, an effort uh, to, to make the glossary. Uh, and they have additional efforts uh, ongoing to, to help provide more context to the landscape uh, to, to inform it all. Uh, the next slide has uh, the last slide. Um, oh dear, that's an earlier version. Well, uh, uh, well the, actual, the actual deck that, that folks have a link to, uh, has that last slide, but the long and short of it is, um, we uh, I reached out to them and and they were kind of doing the same thing, uh, but for other, but starting in a different area than observability. Uh, and so we are, uh, we've been prototyping a way to do this um, that uses a graph data model. Um, uh, so we're using Neo4j. Uh, we have some early prototypes. It's at CNCF slash landscape dash graph. Uh, it's not yet public, so you have to be a CNCF member. Uh, you know, it's it's very, very early days. I just wanted to give people uh, a quick look at it. Um, but uh, it builds a graph uh, data model instead of a big rectangular relational model. You know, so so if you want to answer questions that you don't necessarily know yet, graphs are, are, are quite well suited to this. So we hope to provide a data model that can be used uh, to answer questions uh, such as, you know, for a given project, uh, who contributes to it and what else do they contribute to? Or uh, for all of the sandbox projects, you know, for all of the people contributing to all of those uh, projects, who employs them uh, and who funds those companies and what else do they fund, right? So, so these kinds of questions that are very similar to what we see in FinOps or ad tech uh, and for the last 10 or 15 years in various domains such as biology and chemistry and whatnot, um, you know, many of these algorithms and, and such and the actual slides um, that I pasted in a little too soon before this meeting, uh, uh, provide some links to, to, to what we're up to. Um, uh, you know, those techniques can be applied to the landscape to help us assess things. Uh, and some of the technology choices that we're making uh, should yield uh, a, a nice rich thick client uh, that can work on Windows, Mac, Linux, as well as iOS and Android. And then using WebAssembly, we will have a web version of this too. So, so this is sort of a, again, a graph based data model on the existing landscape data. Um, Sounds great, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, any questions uh, from Matt? Um, so I had one uh, question uh, uh, as a tag. Uh, can you please uh, check on health of projects, uh, especially uh, the Cortex one, um, which uh, recently there, were, there was some news around it. Uh, so as a um, tag, uh, can you please check on how they are yes. doing? And yeah, thank you. Yeah, and, and that's a reasonable uh, segue as well, uh, uh, just to, you know, <laughs> not, not having the slides. Um, uh, one of the talks I saw at KubeCon last, last fall was by Don Foster. Uh, and it was on just that, how to assess the health of projects. You know, I think it was something like beyond GitHub stars and pull requests. Um, you know, the reason that we want to use a, a graph uh, that, that I think a graph, a, a graph data model makes a lot of sense here uh, is to help answer and assess questions such as yeah. that. 
Um, Got it, you know, man. Thank you. Uh, so uh, let's do that uh, offline uh, for sure. We have a few more tags to go through. Is that okay? Thank you. Yes, that's all I have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ricardo? Yeah, on tag runtime, uh, just a few updates. Uh, I'll keep it short. Uh, in containers and runtimes, uh, we had a presentation on Calvary containers. That's a different take on confidential computing from the Intel folks, the GSX team. Uh, we're going to have a presentation from this project called WASMI, which is an interpreter. And in terms of workloads, uh, our next meeting uh, will have a presentation from Open Cruise. This is a project that um, allows you to orchestrate uh, workloads and uh, deliver applications. So it does have uh, some overlap with tag app delivery. So they'll reach out to uh, tag app deliveries too if, if they haven't already. On K-Native, uh, that was an incubation that's already been approved. Um, and Kubevert is out for voting. So if you haven't voted yet, please go ahead and vote. And in terms of tag runtime activities, our uh, BSI working group is still in progress in the GitHub issue. We'll have an in-person tag runtime session at KubeCon, so we're excited about that. And for KubeCon North America, we're looking at having a co-located event, possibly on, on MLOps or AI and MLOps. And we do have more interest from more community members uh, to become tech leads. We have uh, Kate uh, Golenring from the Acri project. He, she has expressed interest in becoming a tech lead. So hopefully we'll have the nomination out pretty soon. And those are all the updates for Tag Runtime. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, any questions uh, for Tag Runtime? Going twice. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Amy, how many do we have left? Security, and then we've got uh, the storage folks all as well. Okay. Eight minutes. Let's let's see if we can make it. I think we can do this. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi. Um, so from our side, uh, I think the main big update is we have a new co-chair, um, Andrew Martin. Um, I think he should be on the call. Um, so I'm going to let him introduce himself instead. <laughs> OK, thank you, Brandon. Uh, hello. Yes, I am Andrew Martin, uh, the CEO and co-founder at Control Plane. We are a cloud native security consultancy with uh, order engineering and pen test. I've been involved and uh, very, very enthusiastically so with the tag for the last uh, four or so years. And in that time, um, authored and, and co-edited some, um, some white papers, also been the program committee member. And um, again, very proudly along with, uh, with some of my team, run the CTFs for the last three cloud native security cons. Um, really very grateful to be invited uh, into uh, into the tag and uh, as you see I hope to bring a, a slightly more um, uh, metaphorically offensive angle to the uh, to the tag we do have an interest in um, offensive security I consider myself more of a purple teamer so very much from a build out the defenses perspective um, and, and also as you see the the uh, the training aspect is especially dear to my heart. Um, as well as having spent some time in, in UK government, I, I'm also um, the uh, Chief Technical Security Officer of Open UK. Um, so really one of the things that I, I hope to help to instigate but also expand within the security tag is helping to sort of intertwine the, the, the UK government approaches with some of the US ordinances to help bring a lot of the very uh, excited and enthusiastic UK security, open source security community uh, with me into this effort. And also to bring some of that offensive security mindset um, along with the excellent work that already exists with the threat models around um, a lot of the existing audits and pieces of work the security tag has done around CNCF um, landscape projects. As you can see, we've also got... Uh, the I hate to cut you off. Ooh. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do have two more groups to be able to get through. It's great to be able to see you here. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yes, 
look nice. forward to being involved. Yeah. We are very much course, looking uh, forward to being able to have you here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, I'm going to quickly go through the rest of it. Uh, Thank you. Um, again, very excited to have Andy on board to, to kind of bring into operations and, and um, red teaming side, purple teaming side of things. Um, we have completed the Secure Software Factory um, document. Uh, we are still seeking feedback, and I believe we have a ticket uh, open to kind of prettify and beautify the, the, the paper. Um, I think we are still waiting on the response and not sure where the ticket um, kind of has been lost. Um, so if we can follow on that, that would be good. Um, another thing that's happening is we've been discussing container breakouts. There have been a lot of them recently, which are not only tied to kernel and, um, and you know, just operating system bugs, but in, in container runtimes as well. So um, the discussion there was around a micro paper um, for that, but instead we are going to try a new format uh, to kind of help uh, maintain uh, contributor attention to instead have a blog post series. Um, so mm -hmm. we're going to try that out. There seems to be a pretty, um, pretty important topic that I think we we see there to be more guidance required. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. One more, right. yeah. One more note on this: we are moving to the third project of Argo, Argo of the four mm -hmm. projects for the security assessments. Just a quick update on that one. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I saw a nine dot nine on on their uh, CVE. So. Uh, that was yeah. pretty scary. Yeah. Uh, tag storage, please. Shane? So, yes, I will be giving an update here. Uh, so the first one is a uh, QFS, formerly TripleFS. We have uh, started the public comment period for this. It's uh, applying for incubation. Uh, and then the next project, Open EBS, is also applying for incubation. Um, so this one, we had a meeting uh, in our tech storage to discuss about this uh, project. Uh, Aaron was also there. Uh, so there are a few issues uh, I want to bring up here. Um, so OpenEBS has uh, a storage engine named Maya Store. Uh, so this one uh, previously had raised some concerns regarding trademark because Maya uh, is also part of the name of the company, Maya Data at that time. But since then, my data was acquired by DataCore and DataCore dropped the Maya branding and they are happy to donate the Maya branding to CNCF. Uh, so the team, Open EBS team uh, is going to open a service desk ticket for CNCF to uh, adopt the Maya branding. So that's uh, in progress. Um, and the second one is regarding the ZFS code that was previously used in uh, CStore, which is a uh, uh, open EBS uh, GitHub repo. But that one uh, was also, uh, I think it's uh, resolved because the code was, re was removed from open EBS GitHub repo. Uh, so we need the CNCF to review that again to make sure that's uh, final. And the third issue is uh, uh, open EBS has uh, various uh, engines with different level of maturity. So we want to uh, get some guidance from TOC on how to do evaluation. Do we apply the same criteria to all the, uh, to all the engines or do we uh, select a few and only you know, evaluate it that way? So that, this is uh, the most uh, important thing that we need to get resolved. Yeah, so um, let's uh, start an email thread uh, with the TOC, Shing, uh, and then we can okay. uh, do it offline. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and, and then the last thing I just want to say that we are working with the uh, Cartographers working group on the cloud native matu uh, maturity model. Yeah, so that's that's all from our side. Thank you. Sounds good. No, that's great. We made it through everything. Um, got a quick update on the projects applying to move levels. Um, also happy to go back and ask for um, questions for tag storage. So let's update the captain one. Uh, other than that, it looks good. Thank you. Uh, this is just the ones that are currently in public comment okay. and in voting. Um, so yeah, we, we, we are good to go here. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Perfect. Thank you all. <laughs>